How Russia's Sarmat Intercontinental Ballistic Missile can change battlefield dynamic. How capable is Sarmat when compared to the US missile defenses? What can it do? Stay tuned to find out. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Before we get into this video, kindly note that the information provided in this video is for educational purposes only. Without further ado, let's dive in. Russian President Vladimir Putin stated a few years ago that his country had developed a variety of invincible weapons that could outperform existing systems, such as the Saramont Intercontinental Missiles and the Beersmith Cruise Missiles. Despite domestic economic difficulties, the Kremlin strongman has run a series of battles and foreign policy victories in recent years, helping to strengthen his popularity. Russia launched an air campaign in Syria in 2015 turning the tide of a complex battle in favor of the Damascus regime. According to a Russian source, the Russian military will perform two test launches of its RS-28 Sermat by the end of the year. Since 2009, the Mackay Rocket Design Bureau has been working on a liquid-fueled super-heavy intercontinental missile with MIRV. The Sermat is one of six new strategic weapons in development in Russia that the Russian Federation President Vladimir Putin announced in his State of the Nation speech in 2018. It would take the place of the R-35 ICBM. Sarmat flight tests were already planned for the third quarter of 2021, according to Krasmash Factory Director General Alexander Gavrilov, who informed the Russian news source in June. The R-36 M2 Vovada missiles, which have been in service since the late 1960s, will be replaced by the RS-28 Sarmat. According to TASS, some of the new ICBM characteristics were revealed during an International Army 2019 meeting, and the new ICBM is expected to outperform its predecessor. The RS-28 Saramai will be able to carry around 10 tons of payload, which might include up to 10 heavy or 15 light MIRV warheads, an undefeated number of avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicles, or a combination of warheads and anti-ballistic missile countermeasures. The missile is Russia's reaction to the US Prom Global Strike System, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense. Sarmat has a brief boost phase, which reduces the time it can be tracked by infrared sensors on satellites, like the US space-based infrared system, making it more difficult to intercept. The Sarmat is thought to be capable of flying trajectory over the South Pole that is fully impervious to any contemporary missile defense system, as well as having the fractional orbital bombardment system. RS-28 launch sites, according to multiple sources, will be outfitted with the Mazer Active Protection System, which is designed to neutralize a possible adversary's first strike advantage by kinetically destroying approaching bombs and cruise missiles and ICBM warheads at the heights of up to 6 kilometers. The new missile is set to weigh 208.1 tons, with a payload of around 10 tons and a fuel capacity of 178 tons. The Sarmat has a range of 18,000 kilometers and can fly unpredictable paths while avoiding missile defense systems. The missile can fly over North and South Poles and even approach target from areas where interception is not expected. The fact that the Sarmat can carry a variety of re-entry vehicles, including hypersonic avant-garde gliders, is particularly concerning for the US military. According to some reports, the Sarmat is capable of wiping out areas the size of England and Wales. The Sarmat is said to have been called after nomadic Sarmatian tribes who lived in what is now Russia, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan between the 6th and the 4th century BC. Putin has already praised the platform and its extraordinary capabilities, claiming that even the most powerful anti-ballistic missile systems will be ineffective against it. The Sarmat may be one of Putin's most boasted about weapons, but it, like other advanced Russian military hardware, has been plagued by delays. Even if you prefer to portray Putin as a Cold War monster rubbing his hands with insane joy as he plots a surprise attack on unsuspecting Americans. He'd have to be positive that he destroyed enough American 450 Miniman ICBM nuclear submarines and bombers in their fortified silos and no counter-strikes could be landed. So how will Churchill react to the United States and Russia's ambitions to develop new missiles? Have a snifter of brandy and grumble about how ridiculous the situation is. Russia is deploying its new RS-28 Sarmai intercontinental ballistic missile, a 100-ton, the 12-warhead behemoth that dwarfs American's 39-ton Miniman ICBM. Meanwhile, the US is entering the new missile race with its ground-based strategic deterrent, which will replace its 50-year-old Miniman ICBM force. The Pentagon estimates that the GBSD will cost at least $85 billion because the United States land-based ICBM infrastructure dates back to the mid-1960s, and the latest Miniman 3 missile was first deployed in 1970. This is fantastic news for both East and West Coast defense contractors. What exactly do America and Russia, as well as their respective citizens, gain from this spending binge? 
The Sarmat is more accurate than its predecessors according to Russian media, and is capable of wiping out areas of the Earth the size of Texas or France. But what advantage does Russia have when American missiles are equally capable of wiping out areas of Earth the size of Moscow or St. Petersburg? The old ICBMs will operate just as well as the new ones in deterring an American assault. And what if the purpose is to build a first strike capability that can destroy American missiles before they can be launched? Even if you want to portray Putin as a Cold War villain rubbing his hands in a maniacal glee as he considers launching a surprise attack on the unsuspecting Americans, he'd be certain of destroying enough Americans, 450 Miniman ICBMs in their hardened silos, as well as nuclear submarine and bombers to prevent a counterattack. Sarmat warheads have an array of modern anti-countermeasures aimed to defeat the US ABM shield, Russian media says. This means that the new missile is focused on bypassing American missile defenses, or at the very least demonstrating Moscow's capability to do so. The US ballistic missile defense system, on the other hand, is only designed to halt a limited ICBM bombardment from minor nations like North Korea and Iran, not an all-out Russian attack. Moscow, ironically, has more faith in the U.S. missile defense system than the Government Accountability Office and other critics, who point to a slew of problems that might render the system ineffectual. It is difficult to see how GBSD can improve American security. The Miniman 3 Force, according to the Air Force, is becoming too susceptible to assault. However, if Russia were to consider launching a nuclear attack on the U.S., it is unlikely that the age of U.S. ICBMs would be a factor. A rogue state like North Korea, on the other hand, will launch a missile at the US for its own reasons, not because a Miniman or a GBSD will convert the Hermit Kingdom into a radioactive slag. What makes more sense is the issue of missile obsolescence dating back to the Nixon and Brezhlev eras. The Sarmat is intended to replace Russia's antiquated RS 36M2 missiles from the 1970s. Think getting components for the 50 year old car, a refrigerator, or MS DOS software you run your Windows 10 computer is difficult? The US ICBM force was created with many specialized pieces that are no longer manufactured. To install nuclear warheads on America's 450 Miniman 3 missiles, a specific wrench was required, and there was only one toolkit with the wrench, which had to be FedEx from base to base. So once the existing missiles proved unstable or too expensive to maintain, it was perhaps unavoidable that new missiles would be required. Other than large silo-based ICBMs such as hypersonic weapons, there are intriguing technologies. Meanwhile, in the Pacific, China is beefing up its conventional military force. Russia is employing a hybrid of conventional and unconventional warfare, while American troops on the ground are still dealing with IEDs and terrorists. So is it really necessary for America to invest tens of billions of dollars in a new ICBM? Well, what should we cover next? Do let us know in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and also press the bell icon to get notified about our new videos. If you enjoyed this video, please check out other videos. Until then, stay tuned.